Hi, Susan Kelly. I'm going to introduce you. Thank you for joining us from South Africa. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, Susa Kelly Marut Lule, founder and CEO of the communication strategy company after her own name, is a brand builder, a strategist, a purposeful business champion. She was the first university graduate in her South African family. Prior to setting up her own company, um, she was MD of Herd Boys, McCann Erickson, and CEO of Grey Advertising in South Africa. Other roles include head of marketing for the bank ABSA, and she is a PhD candidate exploring society's expectations of women to have children. So, Sister Kelly, I'm really looking forward to your presentation, to your talk. Over to you. Thank you so very much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Um, greetings. <laughs> greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Madiba Day. I bring you uh, the love and affection of 52 million ululating South Africans today. Um, and it's an absolute, absolute pleasure for me to be able to join this conversation. I echo everything Antonio has said about how businesses have now had to find a new way of being in the world. My everyday work is about sitting at that intersection of commerce, creativity, and culture, and we find that the insights that sit at that intersection help our clients compete, win, and prosper across the continent. Um, and at that intersection sits a lot of potential, sits a lot of innovation, sits a lot of resilience, but also a lot of resourcefulness. And all of these things are actually the perfect antidote to poverty. So I'm really, really glad to be able to join this conversation today. So let's talk about what's happened to several South Africans over the last while. We know that 2.3 million South Africans have moved out of poverty between 2006 and 2015. This is encouraging, but I know you would agree with me that it is not enough. A lot more must be done and a lot more can be done. Here's how I, here's how I think about it. We are all connected because we are human. So if we, re if we understand that our identity and our destiny is no different from the zebra, whether the bullet lands on the white stripe or the black stripe, it's the whole animal that suffers. So if we don't get together as the developed and developing world, male, females, people in big businesses and in small businesses, humanity doesn't prosper. But I thought I would also just um, give you a few examples of what we understand and what we've experienced in our own business on the everyday basis. And I'll start with commerce. A lot of people have said, why are businesses fascinated about purpose? Surely purpose is about mission and vision and only the ladies in HR should deal with it. And I have shaken my head and said to them, then you're thinking about it the wrong way because purpose defines why corporates exist. It is not about what they produce, but it is about how the world would be a poorer place if they didn't exist. And here's what we've also found, that future-facing businesses no longer focus on selling to consumers, but serving human beings. Because we are consumers some of the time, but we're humans all of the time. So here are a few examples that I wanted to present to you today. The first is a tiny agency called Joe Public, also in South Africa. And many people would think ad agencies are interested only in the breweries and can awards they are, except this one also decided to cultivate and place purpose at its core. So their purpose is around growing greatness. And they've seen the results both in their ability to attract amazing talent, and Antonio referred earlier to what millennials are now looking for in corporates. So they've been able to place at their core a heartbeat that, that's about investing in community rather than, rather than just extracting from community. Another example to bring to your attention is a mining company called Exaro. Um, and many of us would know that mining companies are having a bad time at the moment. So they have decided to place a, a, a purpose called um, protecting or advancing possibilities at their core. So they're not only just trying to reverse the effects 
of mining and communities they're now investing in futures whether that's energy water or just environmental upliftment so i i'm sharing these examples with you to say we are seeing encouraging signs in south africa from purpose-led businesses who are deliberate about using who they are placing the soul at the center of their commerce to effect lasting social impact and i'm convinced that's going to help at least move us along the way of eradicating poverty eventually. The second intersect um, in our business deals with creativity. So, and I, and I get asked oftentimes, what is creativity? Because I can't draw Zah, but here's, and I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if that was the criteria, I wouldn't be a creative practitioner today because I couldn't draw a mouse walking towards me or a rat walking away from me. But what, but, but, but I think what is fantastic about creativity is understanding that it's about joining the unfamiliar to create the magical. And Africa has creativity in abundance. What is required now is an understanding that we have to shift our narrative in how we speak about African creativity. And I'm going to suggest a couple of things. The first one is just reframing our language. So instead of speaking of craft, perhaps we can start speaking about economic contributors. Instead of focusing on street side markets, we can challenge ourselves to bring that creativity onto the high street. Instead of speaking about curio, we can start speaking about cultural catalysts. Because here's what happens when we do this. We restore dignity. We confer accurate value. We name artists and artisans not just as village people, but as co-creators. And more importantly, we create a new narrative anchored in respect and mutual beneficiation. Here are some examples. IKEA, which is familiar to most of you in the audience, last year um, in South Africa at a platform called Design in Dubbo, which happens every February in Cape Town, they were able to enter into a relationship with several creative practitioners from this part of the world. And the result of that has been a homeware and a, a design range, which hopefully will be available on the high street very soon. But here's an ability to then reverse the tide. Instead of Africa taking from the world, Africa is now giving to the world. When those talented people have their work bought, they are able to raise their families, they are able to lift their communities, they are therefore able to escape poverty. Another example to bring to your attention is Mam Esther Mashangu. Uh, that spelling may be difficult to spell, but just if you're Googling her, just look for the lady who paints in Debella on BMWs. Um, <laughs> she painted the first BMW that Madiba was driven in when he first um, came out of prison. You will also be able to see her artwork on several crossways in New York. But here's what's also fantastic about Mam Esther's work is that the National Arts Council here has been able to work with the Department of Education to use some of her geometric prints to teach geometry in school. So here's an example once more of creativity affecting social change and therefore doing its bit to elevate um, people out of poverty. The third one um, is about culture. Um, and this is the one that we're most excited about because we challenge brands all the time by saying to them, and thankfully many of them now agree with me, that to prosper, businesses and corporations must move at the speed of culture. They must also soar at the level of culture because when they do that, they will start to reflect and respond what is happening in culture. So I'm very excited to talk to you about a passion point of ours. Um, and when we introduce this, we often say to people, we would like to bring your attention to Africa's newest F word. And they look at each other going, what is this new F word? It is not a swear word and neither is it famine. It is entrepreneur, which essentially is entrepreneur with F at the beginning. And I like to think of it as entrepreneur to the power of F. Here's why it felt important for me to trademark the phrase. Because when we affect and focus on recognition and naming, we accrue appropriate value. And I'm suggesting that entrepreneurs are actually, in essence, the secret source 
for Africa's future growth. But here's what else we know, is that those same entrepreneurs are the ones that have to deal on an everyday basis with overcoming real and um, socially constructed barriers, whether those are access to market, access to opportunity, access to capital, access to knowledge, or even access to support within their own family and community structures. But we know that if we support these entrepreneurs, not only do they meet needs, but they also solve problems on an ongoing basis. And I'll bring to your attention three examples, also from my favorite country, South Africa. The first one is a tiny creative hub called Think. Uh, this is made up of two award-winning uh, creatives who used to work at big agencies that were part of the IPG or, um, or the Ogilvy Network. They left that world to take on a um, David versus Goliath kind of relationship with the main sector. They now have been able to be recognized not only as a new broom that sweeps clean, but also as an alternative interpretation of what black consumers can look like and behave in everyday advertising and therefore across popular culture. The work they're doing is shifting the narrative, but also it's creating opportunity for employment and therefore softening the stinging pain of poverty. Another example, and, 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 and I'm biased because all of them are run by women as I, as I had said earlier, the second one is a company called Nine Bites. Uh, it was founded by a woman called Mkuli in 2015. She uses design to create a new creative narrative. Um, and she's been able to work with artisans who sit in rural um, Cape, in the rural Cape, and bring their work into my home and to your home if you so choose. Uh, what's wonderful about it is that not only are you able to determine the size of the rug you want and the pattern you want. But as the woman leave your rug, she will be sending you on a, on, a, on a consistent basis updates so that by the time the rug gets to you, it's not just a piece of something, but it's an extension of their hearts and the beginning of a relationship with you. The third example I will bring to your attention is called I Met Tech, also started by a entrepreneur. Um, in, in 2014. Her name is Neile. Um, this is a business that focuses on making uh, prosthetics. Um, she started off making breast prosthetics to help women who just who survived uh, breast cancer, but she's now expanded to work across the field of restoring mobility and therefore dignity and body wellness to people. She's currently been commissioned um, to work on a prosthetic arm for a gentleman who used to be a famous football star in Zimbabwe. And here's another example of somebody who started to meet a very personal and important uh, problem in women's lives and is now being able to extend her gift to people across the world. So what do all these things mean to you? Um, I know I've covered quite a bit, but let me, let me just focus on three takeaways. And uh, there's a key Swahili saying that says, it is the one who lives in the house who knows where it leaks. So what then would be my concluding remarks to you, ladies and gentlemen? The first one is when you do continue to engage with African practitioners, please do it in a manner that recognizes them as equal partners and lean into our lived experiences because the more we share, the more we can create solutions that truly, truly are rooted in what society requires and demands. And secondly, um, as earlier said, entrepreneurs are truly, truly the secret source. As, so as you continue to develop your own global strategies and how to have a presence on the continent, go out and find them. They are there, we are here, and we are willing, able, but also just um, adequately resourced to be either um, strategic advisors, but also just um, co-creators with you on solutions that may help elevate uh, people out of poverty and therefore uplift um, communities. The third one would be about encouraging you to be deliberately authentic in connecting, conversing, and co-creating. Because um, as Antonio alluded in his remarks, I am truly, truly excited at this point where we are no longer just 
admiring the problem, but we're being deliberate about finding solutions that can be executionable, but also that can be measured over time. So to all of you and to Business Fights Poverty, thank you so much for creating this platform and allowing an exchange of views, but also the surfacing of solutions, which hopefully in time and in our lifetime, we'll be able to see a useful and a lasting dial shift um, where we lift a lot more people out of poverty, restore dignity, and as a human race, continue to advance. I thank you so, so very much for this opportunity and I wish you all the best with what's left of the conference.